Good morning, and thank you, Paula, for that beautiful, beautiful music. Welcome, everyone, to the Sunday morning service of the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of San Miguel de Allende. 
with people joining us from throughout Mexico, Canada, and the United States. My name is Gary Belkin, and I will be your service leader today. I am a member of the Sunday Service Committee as well as Fellowship Treasurer. We are especially happy to welcome back the Reverend Arvid uh, Straub as our guest minister, who lives near San Diego, California. Wherever you are, whomever you love, whatever your religious background or lack of one, you are all welcome here. San Miguel de Allende is located on the land of the Guamari people of the Chichimeca Confederation. While the surrounding municipality is mostly territory of the Otami and Nua, migrants from Canada and the U.S. are grateful to make our home in a community resulting from the mixed cultural influences of the indigenous peoples, the Spanish and later the Criollos. You may visit our website, uufsma.org, for full information about our fellowship and how you can participate. After the service today, please stay connected for our virtual coffee hour and discussion. You may accept a breakout room or stay in the main room to visit with Reverend Straub. And now to Donna Shoebrooks with an important message from our COVID-19 task force. Good morning. I'm Bonnie McDowell, a member of the Fellowships Board and of our COVID-19 Task Force. We have exciting news for you today about our plans to resume in-person UU activities in San Miguel. But before I give you the schedule, I want to let you know that all of our activities will be masked. Why, you might ask. Most of us are vaccinated. We know that many of us are already enjoying social activities with our friends, with or without masks. Those who are doing this have made decisions as individuals that these situations are safe enough to suit them. And it's a great joy to get together. Why should fellowship activities be any different? The task force and the board have given this deep thought. As a caring community, we're mindful that some of us and some around us are not vaccinated yet, too young or medical issues or by choice, and others may be incompletely protected by the vaccine. As a UU community, like other UUs in North America, we choose to hold ourselves to a high standard, aiming to be both fully inclusive and careful. All of our fellowships, members and friends will be welcome as we come together again regardless of vaccination status. So for now, we will respect everyone's safety and comfort by wearing masks. Now, here's the proposed schedule. Very shortly, we will organize small groups called regathering groups to share and discuss what we've been through and what we hope for our fellowship going forward. These groups will meet outdoors. Our first large gathering will be late this summer, an outdoor reunion musical for members and friends of the fellowship, a concert of music by some of our favorite San Miguel musicians with time to socialize between the acts. Details will follow. And then we will begin to Zoom our Sunday services from the Aldea again, at first without the congregation, so the team can resolve technical and safety issues. There are many little problems to solve, but we're already hard at work on them. And finally, by late in October, we hope to have our first full service, or as Tom likes to call it, our in-gathering, a very special celebration of our beloved community together in person again at the Aldea and by Zoom. Our timetable for regathering is based in part on the vaccination schedule of the Mexican brigades. We are keenly aware that this is still a pandemic with many people around us still at risk, including some of our own members and employees. We see the bright light of coming together ahead, but remember to exercise good care until we get there. It will be soon. Stay safe, my friends. And now we will hear Reverend Straub's opening words as he lights the chalice. 
Out of the flames of fear, we rise with the courage of our deepest convictions to stand for justice, inclusion, and peace. Out of the flames of scrutiny, we rise to proclaim our faith with hope to heal a fractured and hurting world. Out of the flames of doubt, we rise to embrace the mystery, wonder, and awe of all there is and all there is yet to be. Out of the flames of hate, we rise with a force of love, love that celebrates our shared humanity. Out of the flames, we rise. Thank you for this opportunity to be with you again virtually and to see old and new friends. I'm so happy to be with you. And now, please join us in singing the hymn, What Wondrous Love. The words are in your order of service. What wondrous love is this, oh my soul, oh my soul. What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this that brings my heart such bliss and takes away the pain of my soul, of my soul? and takes away the pain of my soul when i was sinking down sinking down sinking down when i was sinking down sinking down when i was sinking down beneath my sorrow's ground friends to me gathered round oh my soul oh my soul friends to me gathered round oh my soul to love and to our friends i will sing i will sing to love and to all friends i will sing to love and to all friends who pain and sorrow mend with thanks unto the end i will sing i will sing with thanks unto the end i will sing please join us in reciting our spoken covenant the words should appear on your screen we respect the interdependent web of life and work for a just and peaceful world we encourage the search for truth and meaning strive for compassion in our relationships and seek values that will benefit our lives and the lives of others this is our covenant respetamos todos los estilos de vida dentro de su red interdependiente y trabajamos por un mundo justo y pacífico alentamos la búsqueda de la verdad y la comprensión total. Nos esforzamos por mantener compasión en nuestras relaciones y buscamos valores que beneficien nuestras vidas y las vidas de los demás. Este es nuestro convenio. Good morning. I'm Jürgen Allers and I am a member of the Sunday Service Committee and I've been asked to Stand in for Tom, our minister, who usually does this very special part of our Sunday service, where we as an extended family, wide and far and close by, share our deeply held joys and sorrows and concerns that for which we light a candle 
to celebrate or to observe the joy and concerns of the week past or the week coming up. So the first candle this morning is one of joy. Uh, on this coming Saturday, we will celebrate June Teeth, which many of you know now, maybe perhaps through the Black Lives Matter movement, was the first emancipation on June 19th in 1865 in the state of Texas. And today it is actually celebrated in 45 states throughout the United States. Our next sharing is, is one of sorrow of the many more injured and killed by gun violence this week. A great joy for a milestone celebration of Malcolm Halliday's 65th birthday coming up this Thursday. By the way, both Tom and Malcolm may right now be on the road to their Massachusetts cot cottage where they'll be for a few months until they come back to our home here in San Miguel. The next, uh, the next candle I will light is one of concern. Joan Wolf's husband, John, has been suffering from pneumonia this past week. And we want to keep him and his well-being, his speedy recovery in our hearts. While I'm sharing these joys and concerns and lighting the candles, you can also feel free to put a joy or concern in your chat box. The next is a unique joy that I'm sharing with you. Some of you may have heard that a professional lobster fisherman this last week was swallowed by a whale while he was 45 feet down underwater. And for 30 horrendous seconds, he was inside the cavernous mouth of the whale. And then the whale, I guess, must have realized whatever I've got in my mouth with scuba gear and all isn't gonna go for me. So the whale came back to the surface and much to the surprise of the fisherman, he got spat back out, feet first, rescued by his fellow fisherman. A true story right out of scripture, I would imagine. Um, the next is a concern for the continuing strife of the many millions of people around the world who are struggling to survive and maybe have a chance at democracy. To name just a few, Ethiopia, Myanmar, Yemen. And in our own backyard in Central America, Honduras and, and Guatemala and El Salvador. The next is a candle I light for joy and hope. As global leaders of the G7 meet in Great Britain to gather and work on radical issues of common concern, including the environment, we hope and pray for success of this meeting. The next is a joy and hope 
for continuing vaccinations and of wealthy nations joining forces to equip the poor nations with greatly needed supplies. And finally, I light a candle for all the joys and concerns that remain unspoken, but lie deeply within our hearts. And now Reverend Straub will lead us in a pastoral prayer. I'll begin with a spoken prayer, and then there'll be a moment of silence for individual prayers, contemplation, and meditation. The words of the prayer this morning are by the Irish poet, John O'Donohue, a morning offering. I bless the night that nourished my heart to set the ghosts of longing free into the flow and figure of dream that went to harvest from the dark, bread for the hunger no one sees. All that is eternal in me welcomes the wonder of this day. The field of brightness it creates, offering time for each thing to arise and illuminate. A place on the altar of dawn, the quiet loyalty of breath, the tent of thought where I shelter, ways of desire I'm sure to and all the beauty drawn to the eye. May my mind come alive today to the invisible geography that invites me to new frontiers, to break the dead shell of yesterdays, to risk being disturbed and changed. May I have the courage today to live the life that I would love, to postpone my dream no longer, but do at last what I came here for and waste my heart on fear no more. And now we'll enter a moment of flight. Amen and blessed be.
Your contributions support the expenses of these services and the many other programs of our fellowship. In addition, one half of our collections goes to support worthy NGOs who serve our local community in numerous ways. One such organization is Jovanes Adelante. Of the 25 to 30 top students Jovanes Adelante accepts per year, our fellowship proudly sponsors four students throughout the four to five year course of their university studies. All four of our students have now completed their first year. Please meet two of our scholarship students, Julissa Munoz Ruiz and Luis Rodrigo Zapatero Ortiz, whose photos will now appear on your screen. Julissa is majoring in public accounting and is starting her third semester at the Universidad de Leon. In her words, her personal goals are, quote, to be a good student, take care of my health, ensure my happiness, help my parents, and in the future to be able to support children in my community who seek to improve themselves and who do not have the resources. Her professional goals are to, are quote, to be an accountant, to work in this field, which I like and love the most. I strive every day to have a positive attitude, facing obstacles, never giving up, fighting for what I really want. Her mentor describes her as enthusiastic and with a positive attitude to face challenges. He is convinced she will acquire greater confidence and knowledge and will excel even more. Luis is completing his fifth semester studying systems engineering at TIS, that's the Technolog Technology Institute of San Miguel of Superior Studies. He is an excellent, highly motivated student who loves programming and enjoys being involved in a work environment with his studies. He speaks at length about the total support he gets from his parents and siblings who are, quote, the hardest working people imaginable. His brother also has a Hovenus scholarship. Our goal in investing in Hovenus Adelantis and other NGOs we support is to leave lasting positive impacts on our community, the future of our local workforce, their families, and a 21st century society. During the upcoming musical selection or immediately after the service, please go to our donate link, which you can soon find on the screen, in the chat box, or on our website, uufsma.org. That's uufsma.org. Thank you all for opening your hearts and being generous today. This morning's offering will now be very gratefully received.
Some years ago in a bra blog by my colleague, Victoria Weinstein, I found the best description of what our congregation should be that I've ever encountered. She wrote, today, the church is an outsider institution as it should always have been. It exists to question cultural norms, to help us want to write things and to hunger and thirst for justice to make us uncomfortable with the gap between our professed ideals and our actions. It exists to claim us, to shake us, to demand of us, and to make us new people, brothers and sisters of one another, lovers of the world, workers on behalf of the kingdom of equals, and the kind of people that others are so drawn to that they can't help but ask, wow, how did you get trained to be such an amazing human being? I got so excited by this. I got so excited by that last sentence. How do we train to be such amazing human beings? Yes, that's what we should be about as religious communities. We need to be places where we can train to be awesome human beings and what better place after all? What better purpose is there for this one precious life than to learn to be a wonderful human being, meaning to be wise and compassionate, to be healing and loving and happy. That's our birthright. After all, the Buddha, the enlightened one, the awakened one, was a human being. 
his neurological being wasn't that different from ours. And that means that we have Buddha's brain, essentially. That the potential that he reached is something that we can reach. And as Unitarians, we believe that Jesus was fully human. And that means that we can have the loving heart of Jesus, the Buddha, Jesus. They were human. We are human. We have these potentials within us. One time, I was challenged to articulate the mission of a congregation in business terms, which I resisted at first, but then I decided to give it a try. So the first question was, what business is the congregation in? And the second question was, what product did it offer? My answer came fairly quickly. The business of the church is to create whole human beings and our product is heal lives that help heal the world. The business of a congregation is to create whole human beings and our product is heal lives that help heal the world. And I wish more people knew that that's what Unitarian Universalist congregations are about because we've been a bit coy about spreading our good news. And overall, the brand of organized religion has gotten a really bad name for some very good reasons. Organized religion has become more abusive, more corrupt as time has gone on and the scandal of so many organized religions now plaster the headlines. The Catholic Church priest abuse scandals which continue to be uncovered the televangelist scandals of greed and hypocrisy, the intolerance and harshness of the religious right, which has now led to idol worship of Donald Trump over Jesus by many evangelical Christians. And many young people and people in general feel that the religious uh, organized religion is hypocritical, judgmental, and complacent. And because we're sort of an organized religion, we're put in the same category in people's minds. And so more and more people claim to be spiritual but not religious. A recent poll has found that the first time since people have been polled, more people claim not to be part of a religious, of an organized religion in the United States than our part. So people naturally are being spiritual by themselves because there's that deep yearning to fulfill their human potential. There is a deep need to grow and to become more authentic, wiser, more compassionate. But being spiritual by yourself, can only take you so far. Maybe your yoga class can meet that need, but probably not. That weekend meditation worship workshop will only take you so far. Because there's a profound truth. It's, it's a, a truth that's actually in our biology. We can't be fully human until we profoundly connected to other human beings. When we're not, we pay a price. As this pandemic has so greatly demonstrated. Because after all, we're mammals, even more that we're actually higher primates, which means that we need to be part of bands to be real to be truly who we are. We can't be truly who we are as isolated individuals. We need to be in bands, we need to be in clans, we need to touch and hear and smell each other. And it's not only that we need other people to be awesome human beings, 
We need other people to be human at all because our brains and our bodies don't work well if we're isolated and not truly connected. And in North American culture, that's really not what a lot of people experience. The Harvard sociologist, Robert Putnam, who's the author of a famous study called Bowling Alone, did a study back in the early 2000s of 40 geographical areas where he counted people's connections. And he found that the loneliest area in the United States is Los Angeles. Uh, I was shocked to find that the second loneliest is San Diego. There were two studies that he compared. One was done back in 1985, the other in 2004. Each of the studies went on to ask a, the people a number of questions about who those people uh, could, could confide in when they had trouble in their life. And here are some of the highlights that shocked the sociologists so much that they had to recheck the data. It was so shocking that it was hard to believe. In 1985, the response given most often was having three people to whom one could confide. In 2004, the modal response was zero. The percentage of people who said they had no one with whom to confide jumped from 10% in 1985 to 24.6% in 2004. That means in just 20 years, the percentage of people who said they had no one to talk to when they needed to talk went from one person in 10 to one in every four. This is simply shocking. This was before everybody had a smartphone. It's got to be much worse now. And of course, we were all in forced isolation during the pandemic and we are now counting the cost. If a person has only one confidant, the chances are that that one confidant is his or her spouse or partner. What this means is that the ties beyond the nuclear family are being cut. So loneliness, is a devastating epidemic to us as individuals and to our societies. People need to belong. As they used to say on the TV show, Cheers, most of you remember that, we need a place where everybody knows your name, a neighborhood, an extended family, a church, synagogue, temple, fellowship. And if we don't have that organic community where different kinds of people with different kinds of experiences, personalities, and views come together, then we're tempted to join some larger abstract track tribe like the political tribes and extremist groups that we're seeing now that define themselves in opposition to others. Dr. Dean Ornish, a heart specialist, has established that people who are active in religious communities are way healthier than those who aren't. And he controlled for things like obesity, smoking, and the lack of exercise. Still, people who smoked or were obese or lacked exercise tended to be healthier if they were involved in religious communities. So it's good for our spiritual health, it's good for our social and psychological health and even our physical health. What I hear most often from North Americans about what they admire about Mexican culture, what's so healing and refreshing is the warm and close network of relationships that people have with their families and friends and their neighborhoods. My ministry right now, since I've left parish ministry, is teaching people spiritual practices. That's the core 
of my ministry as a spiritual director and meditation coach. And a spiritual discipline is truly a powerful tool for transformation. Meditation will actually remodel your brain in beneficial ways. But even without that, you don't need to meditate for hours a day to enter a monastery to start a spiritual life. You already have a spiritual life, even if you don't know it. The 16th century monk, Brother Lawrence, said, if you knew what the soul said to God sometimes, you would be surprised. So take a little time to find out what deep questions and thoughts the soul is having. And you might be surprised. And it's better when you do that in the context of a spiritual community. Because as the Vietnamese Zen master Thich Nhat Hanh said, a lone practitioner is an ex-practitioner. Even to keep our private and personal spiritual disciplines going, we need the support of community. The religious community is the place where our children, we and our children can learn or be reminded about what virtue and integrity are in a culture that sends us all the wrong messages about that. We, we can be encouraged to act on our deepest values and reminded about what they are. The religious community is the place where we're encouraged to practice generosity, which is truly good for the soul. As all the great religious traditions agree and the psychological studies are proving over and over again that happiness has to do with giving of our material possessions, of ourselves, of our service, of our time, of our care, and of our love. The Buddhist teacher Saren Salzberg says that practicing generosity is the beginning of spiritual awakening because it helps us to truly recognize the profound oneness with others and with our planet. Things that make us, make us happier when we give them away and they loosen the bonds of ego and grasping and allow us to be more fully human, more fully who we are, more authentically human. The spiritual community is the place where we learn to practice gratitude. One of the oldest and most effective spiritual practices of all are counting our blessings. Our congregations are where we find those all important role models who provide examples to us of what it means to be a wonderful person. You know who they are. The question for our discussion later is to talk about and identify and talk about who some of those role models are. And these are people that we find in our religious community. We're in the business of creating whole human beings. Whole human beings have an open mind and an open heart. They're reflexive and aware. They're able, they're able to grow and to admit their mistakes. They're honest with themselves first and others too. They know that they're not perfect, that they can never be perfect. And because they know that, they don't expect others to be perfect and they're quick to forgive. They have a sense of humor and can laugh first of all at themselves. Whole human beings are able to have compassion for themselves and for others. They love with depth and power. They can be vulnerable. They're kind to the others they meet and they take good care of themselves. Whole human beings understand that they're part of a story that is longer and larger than their own lives. They walk gently on the earth and spend time in and learn from nature. They feel a responsibility for the larger community 
They stand with those who are oppressed, mistreated, and abused. Being good consumers is not what they live for. Because they love and are loved, because of their integrity, they inspire others. They are the righteous ones who hold up the world, the ones that show us all how to live. And our adventures in congregations is to be that community for those who resolve to live as whole human beings and who with open hearts and open arms welcome those hungry souls and broken hearts that seek us in this great adventure of the spirit. Amen and may it be so. Now please join us in singing Wake Down My Senses. Wake now my senses and hear the earth call. Feel the deep power of being in all. Keep with the web of creation your bow. Giving, receiving as love shows us how. Wake now my reason, reach out to the new. Join the service with these words by Reverend Mark Bellatini. Go in peace, live simply, gently, at homes in yourselves, act justly, speak justly, remember the depths of your own compassion, forget not your power in the days of your powerlessness. Do not desire to be wealthier than your peers and stint not your hand of charity. Practice forbearance. Speak the truth or speak not. Take care of yourselves as bodies, for you are a good gift. Crave peace for all people in the world, beginning with yourselves, and go as you go with the dream of that peace alive in your heart. And to end our service, we'll be listening to Playing for Change, singing the popular song, Everyday People. Sometimes I'm right and I can be wrong. 
My own beliefs are in my songs Butcher the baker, the drummer and then Makes no difference what group I'm in Sometimes I'm right and I can be wrong My own beliefs are in my song The butcher, the banker, the drummer and then It makes no difference what group I'm in Cause I am everyday people Sometimes I'm right and I can be wrong My own beliefs are in my songs Butcher, the baker, the drummer and then Makes no difference what group I'm in